see this, put up your hand in a place, up, up, in a space. If you're in a this, put up your hand in a space. Everybody up in a this, love JS, let me see smile in a face. JS can't fit na miss, like when action dispatches. What me say? JS can't fit na miss, like when action dispatches. More than ever meet the eye to this, doctor who enter in a TARDIS. Always cool, never mean a malice, like the one, Wonderland and Alice. More love in a this than Paris, more than Rastaman love Charlie's. JS can waste coat, share, hug up people for days. Berlin, this at the base. Nested loops, comfy, turn up the base. Everybody up in all this. Love JS, when me see sign in a face. Everybody, like when action dispatches. This and a C, plus, plus, no Java, no go. JavaScript, run the show. Any browser, any size, run pan any device. The biggest thing I read is still we grow. This are no C, no Java, no Go. JavaScript, run the show. All right, ready to start. Okay. Hello. Whoa, so many people. Hey, uh, with the nested loops, uh, I'm Jan. Who are you? I'm Khalil. Boris. Martin. Yeah, uh, you might have seen us this morning or uh, one and a half years ago uh, at this very place. Um, we want to tell you how this entire thing was made. And there's a story to it, and uh, I want to tell the story. So, the year was... 2014, and I gave a talk at JSConf about web audio for music production and live performances. And there was this part in this uh, talk where I was actually performing music, and this is this is how it looked like. Uh, I don't remember it that loud. Uh, okay, so what you saw was just me dabbling on an iPad and I had no idea how to make music. I bootlegged uh, Jay-Z, Linkin Park. They didn't sue me, it was great. And, but at that time I had a much bigger dream and that was... Um, you have the three guys, uh, they have their drums and they talk MIDI to your software. So the problem is... Neither do I have um, three uh, people capable of doing that, including me, uh, nor do I have the MIDI instruments, and nor do I have the software. So that was kind of a foreshadowing of uh, what happened. Uh, so after that, I had a plan. The plan was find band members, buy MIDI instruments, and write the software. So it just happened. I was, I was just browsing Twitter a couple of weeks later, and then I saw this one tweet by Khalil. He was like, oh, before I was a developer, I was a musician. Check it out, this is me. So let's check it out. Whoa! Yeah, and I was like, I have, to, I have to collaborate with this guy. He knows how to make music and he has a voice. That sounds good. So, meet the ill inspector. Okay, so this is just a little story time. So, I was uh, doing music before. I was working as a developer, so I was like, for like four years or so, it's just like touring in Europe and doing like dance hall. I was living in Leipzig, uh, there was a label there. And actually, so this video was actually shot in Japan because there was, at some point, there was this Japanese guy, he wrote us an email and said, hey, we would like to release an album or something. And so, okay, great. So we recorded an album for him. And this track actually we made for him as a request because he said in Japan, they love Pupa-san, who is like, <clears throat> he's like a foundation dancehall reggae artist. And uh, so I made a song about him. And we shot this video over there. We were uh, in Japan for a week to do like promotions and stuff like that. And 
And that's how it kind of was created. And it actually was my greatest hit, I would say. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So the cool thing was when I was talking to Khalil, he actually told me, well, I have this brother, see him in the background? Uh, he's actually a music producer. I was like, that is great. So let me count. I need three people. Me, Khalil, and this guy who actually knows how to make music. It's like, yeah, got the band members. Then I just had to buy MIDI instruments, and we just bought, I just bought like one of these. It's very sturdy, very great, has a lot of buttons. That means it can do a lot of things, I, I thought. Uh, I had no idea, like really. Um, so I cool, got the MIDI instruments, just have to write the software. Uh, writing software is easy, right? I mean, we all know that it takes a week. Uh, but should we really build like a huge music production app for this just to perform at JSConf, knowing that it's like a couple of weeks before JSConf? Uh, probably not. Also, what kind of music do we actually want to make? So we reached out to the JSConf organizers and like, hey, what kind of performance were you thinking of? And Malta was like, be creative. We trust you. Uh, and we're like, excellent. That's great. Uh, so yeah, we, because I'm from Berlin, they're from Stuttgart, so we met up at Khalil's house, and this, this is you. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so that's where, like, we had our first meeting, uh, and we were basically sitting, we are trying to figure out what we're going to do, so we told Boris, Boris, we need music, Boris is like, okay, I got music. And it was like, cool. So, like, because Boris has been doing music since forever. And uh, so he had like, a bunch of beats lying around. And we didn't have a lot of time. So we had to, there was not really time to do a whole new beat and stuff like that. So we chose one of his that was unreleased. And um, we liked it. So we, we decided on the music first. And then we were like, okay, what are we going to do? Like, we have to do something in the browser. Like, just music. It's not enough. So, uh, so we, so the thought basically came up. I don't know who had it or whatever, but we're thinking, okay, we're gonna take talks. I mean, basically, what you know, like take some interesting snippets and then trigger them on the music in the browser. Like the video has to play in the browser, the music has to be played in the browser, and everything needs to be triggered via the uh, the pads, basically, right? So, so basically, oh, sorry. Um, so. This was basically how it worked. We, we had, sorry, we had the music running and we were triggering just like random snippets that we just cut out of the YouTube videos and we're just trying around stuff like this. So the music is in the background. Yeah, just triggering those snippets. And so this was going on that weekend, and we were just trying, for two days, we were trying out stuff back and forth. And, and that weekend, we kind of laid the groundwork for all of it. And then um, I was practicing. That's me performing over the beat. So I had some lyrics ready, so. Yeah, okay. What and this is basically... Java, JavaScript, for those of you who are not Can I stop this? JavaScript? No. Okay. JavaScript. I'm just gonna go to this one, okay. So, and then this video, the last one was us just before the conference. We had everything kind of ready. The, video, the videos were cut to a certain... Uh, so that you can see the speakers really big. And then we had uh, Boris also put a filter over the videos. And um, so that was the first iteration and, and then... And actually, this took like weeks and weeks of meeting up with each other, arranging the snippets so that it kind of makes sense, that it's funny. And so, like, Boris and me were meeting once a week or so for a while. And uh, Boris was kind of, uh, yeah, we were just trying to make sense out of the snippets we had. And, ha and we were trying to make sense, uh, um, we're trying to make it look good. And actually, Jan was programming the software the whole time. Like, there was lots of little things that needed to be figured out. Like, how can we... Because, because the videos needed to be instant. Like, when you press a button, it just needs to happen right away. It needs to be synced on the music and everything. So there was a lot of crazy stuff that went... And I'm sure you're going to talk about this in a minute. And uh, so this is us actually practicing 
the day before the conference uh, 2015 in our uh, hotel room. Uh, you can see the venue right there, just going through the whole thing. <laughs> and that was us doing sound check the day before. And uh, yeah, and now Jan with the software. So yeah, the software is really easy, right? So you just have to read MIDI data that this thing sends a thing to your browser. And you're like, oh, cool, these are events. Uh, but this is what the data looks like that this thing is trying to communicate with you. It felt like the movie The Arrival. Like You have to kind of understand what this computer is talking to you. It's like all of these numbers, you have to make sense. Like, what is the position? What is like, did it get pressed or not? And you have to figure out all of these. You have to read the MIDI document for this thing. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Why, why did I? Ah, oh, God. Well, that just takes like two weeks. Uh, and then what you have, like you come up with like an idea, okay, so for the first row, I want to have this video played, uh, this, and then that video played, you come up with like an idea, it's kind of hacky. Um, but the thing is, so you have a video, and videos usually have like a video feed and an audio feed. And you kind of want to have like the audio sync with everything, so you have to kind of like split them up again uh, to make, put like effects on it and everything. And then you have to kind of make like the video still be snappy. Because how do you play a video without a delay in the browser, like using the video tag? Do you A, just do video element dot play? Do you B, preload and then play? Or do you C, use an obscure hack and then call play on the thing? <laughs> a, what? B? Yeah, it's C. So it's kind of hacky. So you have to load the video in an array buffer, uh, make a blob out of it with the correct mime type. Otherwise, it doesn't know it's a video. And then, it's the greatest thing ever, create an object URL out of this massive video, which is really bad for RAM usage, but we didn't care. <laughs> this is the only thing that makes like pushing a button and then being it instant there possible. All the other ones have like a lot of delay, which I'm probably sure we wouldn't have never heard, but the person actually pushing the button really felt it, so uh, we needed this. And yeah, so the cool thing is you do the same for all the elements. Uh, you have someone who's good at pushing buttons, uh, that guy. And yeah, you have your JSConf opening performance software. Uh, there's more, there's always more, as we know. Uh, the videos were pre-rendered, so we just had videos with the effects on it uh, out of like render it. The beat wasn't live performed actually, we just pushed a button and then the music was playing, nobody noticed, that was great. Um, uh, uh, but if we only had more time, we would have done it all live. So that was 2015, so we had, uh, should I, uh, do you want to? No, you can go ahead. Hey. So we had a pretty overwhelming performance, like it was kind of like our little secret with Malte for like a couple of weeks. We couldn't talk about this. We are like all giddy giddy. Uh, <laughs> nobody, nobody can know about this. Um, so the, the response was great. Like we got so, so much great feedback. And I can tell you like before the talk or before the performance, this imposter syndrome thing that also applies for music performances, <laughs> especially if you don't know anything about music, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. Um, so yeah, we, do you want to do the tea story? Yeah. yeah. So. Made the nested loop t-shirts. Um, so do you have the thing loaded up? Yeah. And um, many people wanted the t-shirt. We produced the t-shirt for the, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and so we made the story five thing. I wanted to have selfies from everybody. So anybody who has a t-shirt, please, and you didn't s send a selfie our way, I want to have the selfie so I can put it into the story file, okay? So there's a lots, of, lots of people who, it's hola. And it's this, yeah, lots of uh, cool people with the t-shirt. And um, yeah, so we, so we saw those t-shirts on uh, uh, Teespring. And we, we made a little bit of money, so the margin on the t-shirt was very low. The little money thing was like $300 or something like that. We all gave away for good causes. And uh, so they're like $100 per, ca per cause or something like that. So we didn't make any money from it. But um, so, yeah, so we all felt really good. And it's nice to see a lot of people with the t-shirt out here today. It was really cool. <clears throat> 
<laughs> so yeah, the, so as you all know, there was a break, a JSCon break, and then we got asked again to step it up a notch. Uh, they didn't really ask for that, but we felt uh, we had to do that. Um, and this time, I really wanted to build a real piece of software, not this like six weeks hack that lived on this obscure video hack that is still in the production software now. Um, so this time, we actually started uh, six months ago already. Like As you can see, in October, the first two commits, and then we worked along the way on that. And so 2015, what the thing did was push a button, and it did a thing. And in 2017, uh, it, you push a button, and it does 10x things. Uh, so we kind of thought, who, who does know like, which one is which? There, by the way. This is, this is our tech stack. Uh, now I have to guess which one is Redux, React, and uh, Electron. So we thought, like the one and a half year that passed, like everybody was talking about React, Redux, Electron. So we thought we have to make a software to make music with all of these tools so that we can dog feed our industry, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the app actually looks amazing, and you will see it later on. So you have like, this is like a representation of the physical pad, and then on the side you can see like what kind of clip you want to play and all these things, whatever you want to attach to it. And so what was really cool about this is you can import, app export, project setups. So the thing before was whenever Boris wanted to have like a button on a different thing there. He was is, he is calling me, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this, push that to GitHub so that he can work on it an hour later. This was horrible, so uh, now we can like, export to zip and import and all these things. Uh, it has perfect timing in there. Before that, we had like, a lot of human errors, um, mainly mine, and now there's a computer taking care of the timing, as in if you push the button too early before the beat, it can make this wait a bit, and like, you, like it will be perfect to the beat. So the problem is, if you're too late, we cannot fix that, because JavaScript doesn't have time travel uh, yet. Uh, let, let's see, TC39, what's, what's up? Uh, <laughs> this time, we actually do have live music. Um, I mean, you didn't notice before, there was no live music. but uh, And also, the, the, we had live video filters, as you saw this morning. Um, but yeah, this is all like technical stuff. Let's let's hear how like a beat is made. So hi. Um, so um, we this time we wanted to make an original beat, or I wanted to do that. And um, first up, um, the guys uh, listened to all the talks, and they uh, gathered snippets for me. And then I had about 150 snippets. Um, about stuff that I don't really understand. And uh, so the first thing we have to do, we, when we start from scratch, we have to find something that we can build on. So um, basically, I was just um, trying out stuff like... And so it means that some of the code that's running now in Angular 2... Is, and, and, and so it means that some of the code that's running now in Angular 2 is... My fault. And so it means that's the flow of data. And I played around with that. I had the pitch function uh, with this um, uh, uh, controller, which is the Ableton push. And um, I just played around. And then at some point, we had um, a chorus, which um, is, as you, I think, all know by now. Uh, people got JavaScript. People this one. The people got mad JavaScript. And uh, then I started to build uh, a beat around it, basically, to have uh, yeah, pretty pretty simple. Um, uh, yeah, built built uh, a beat around it with the bass line, drums first. Um, I think it's pretty loud. Everything. Yes, it's a kick. Um, eight bit kick as well, and uh, then just build on top of it. Make a bass line. And some melody. And then we just need some people talking. People 
people got JavaScript. People, people got mad. People got people 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 got mad. People got JavaScript. People, people got mad. Yeah, that's basically what I did. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. So 2017 brought a lot of changes and a new band member. Uh, yeah, you might have noticed, I mean, we kind of said it as well. Martin joined the band and was doing live lights and the tech behind that is pretty amazing. And please tell, tell us how you did it. Yeah, uh, technically I'm more a roadie than a proper band member, but um, so um, can, we, can we switch to the other PC now? Ah, all right. Of course, where's the mouse? All right. So, um, who was here at last year's uh, last time JSConf? Oh, that's uh, quite a few people, but um, I gave a talk at JSConf EU 2015, and there I uh, kind of like uh, led through uh, how to control professional light equipment uh, using JavaScript. I, I won't go into that much detail here, but uh, yeah, that's basically uh, what I did is uh, Lightshow.js. But um, if you were there, you already know that it was actually Lightshow CSS. Um, because um, everything you saw this morning, considering the light show, was entirely written in CSS. It was uh, proper CSS code that was interpreted uh, by my browser in real time. Um, and everything I did was just toggling um, classes on a parent element uh, using the thing here. So. Um, each of these uh, buttons has uh, a class name attached to it, and if I press it, uh, the class gets added. If I release it, the class gets removed. And there are some buttons that act as uh, switches where I can just press, uh, class gets added, press again, class gets removed. So um, this was basically how the light show was controlled. Um, so in order to do that with CSS, we need some HTML to operate on. And this is basically how that looks. I have uh, devices, and I give them class names. I have some special attributes like type and channel, which is uh, technical stuff. Um, and it turns out browsers uh, just don't care if they don't know the tag name. They simply treat them just like HTML. So all fine here. Um, I know I can use uh, proper custom elements in the future, but uh, didn't need to. So um, <clears throat> the CSS, I have a color property, I have a brightness property, uh, and I define an animation over brightness and color. Um, the color is pretty simple. There's something that CSS already provides. Um, but brightness uh, is uh, yeah, something that I just made up. Um, and uh, considering more complex devices like those here, um, they, they can move around and stuff like that. They have lots and lots of functions, and they simply made up uh, CSS property names uh, for each of their features. Um, and all of them can be animated. So um, I add some JavaScript to this. In this case, I will just uh, pull the get computed style of all the device nodes. Um, and I get the computed style returns uh, conveniently uh, the current animation state, including any animation and transition that is currently running. So um, there's that. I get um, the color value, I get the brightness value, and I send them over uh, the DMX protocol. Side note, um, DMX is a serial protocol that is used by each and any piece of professional lighting hardware there is. So um, I'm, I can be pretty sure if I come to any venue, they will have a DMX system, and I, uh, my DMX interface will completely work with that, in theory. Um, <laughs> So um, the only thing I will mention about DMX now is that each and every device has a unique and uh, yeah, a very specific pre-configured address, um, which is what you saw in the HTML earlier. So, but back to that CSS code, um, there's uh, obviously uh, two problems with this. First of all, um, we can't just make up CSS property names uh, because uh, they will simply get ignored by the browser, get computed style, won't return them. So, uh, that's a no-go. 
only now we have custom properties. So if I add two dashes, everything works fine, right? Yeah, except um, that custom properties together with transitions and animations currently do not work as intended in any browser. So um, I had to find uh, some way around this. And this is this nice little hack. Um, instead of uh, just using uh, my properties like brightness, pan, tilt, whatever there is, um, I simply uh, choose one of the properties that can be animated, like left, right, top, bottom, margin, padding, whatever. Anything that can be animated, I can use as a replacement. So in this case, I chose like uh, left for brightness as a replacement, and I can animate the left property. And yeah, everything works like intended. <laughs> so the only thing I need to do in order to get that done is um, this little hack, which is uh, I pass the CSS uh, um, now using the rework parser, then um, I do some AST transforms, uh, introduce uh, custom properties, introduce uh, four animated properties, I introduce these fallbacks, and then serialize the CSS again, inject it into the page, it gets applied to my device nodes. Then, uh, in order to read all that out, I have to reverse all that, uh, so I have to use get computed style to get, in this case, the left property value, and uh, apply it to the DMX devices as um, brightness in this case. This works pretty well, only all this doesn't really help to prepare a light show, simply because um, there's never enough time to prepare if I only had more time, right? Um, so the uh, last conferences I did that at, uh, I had like, at best two hours uh, preparation time at the venue being connected to the DMX devices. And as it is, I'm, I'm rarely connected to uh, such huge setups of DMX devices. So um, most of the two hours are spent fixing bugs. <coughs> and then I have maybe like half an hour to program the lights. And this is not something I want to live with. Um, and especially for this conference, I needed to come, with some, come up with something else. So um, I had uh, from the awesome people that were planning uh, the layout of this conference, I got, uh, it was like a month ago or something like that, these uh, 3D images of how the stage is supposed to look. And it's pretty much like that now, right? So. <clears throat> I uh, started to think about what I could do, and I threw together uh, basically any software that I could find. Um, um, and the end result is uh, this. So I have uh, built DMX Pen, which is basically just code pen for light shows. <laughs> <laughs> and the nice thing about DMX Pen is that I have this runner which uh, uses 3JS and A-Frame uh, to provide me with a proper preview of what it might look like on stage. It turns out it doesn't really look like that um, because uh, obviously my colors are much brighter than the real ones. But yeah. Um, to the left top, um, you see uh, the HTML or devices panel. Um, this is a list um, of all the devices that are found over in the main hall. Um, so we have like um, kind of a lot of uh, these, these spotlights here and uh, uh, this LP, the short for light panels. There's a two by two meters uh, panel. There are 35 of them. Um, yeah, and I, I, I simply just uh, got all those uh, channel numbers and so on um, from the people at the venue when I arrived here two days ago. And yeah, that's that. Um, and this here is the SCSS code that was actually the light show. So um, this is uh, a lot of mix-ins, uh, configuration, basic settings, uh, things like that. And then there is this. A1 is simply uh, the top left bottom button. And if I press it, it will just run the uh, color animation that are defined there. <coughs> yeah, and finally, what I also got there was uh, this uh, moving head spotlights, which I can also uh, toggle and trigger and yeah. 
the nicest thing about this, uh, you, you didn't see that because uh, in order to see these moving head spotlights, you need a lot of haze on the, or smoke in the room, and it's not good at the beginning of a conference. Um, so uh, that's that. It's, uh, it looks much better here. <coughs> Reality bites, if I only had enough time. Um, so um, all of this, um, and don't judge me about this, is uh, 12 megabytes of JavaScript. Um, <laughs> and it really uses everything there is, basically. So I have the code mirror editors. Uh, thanks for writing them. I know he's here somewhere. Um, I, I use ZustJS, which is actually, actually an ASM compiled uh, version of uh, libscss or libzus or something like that. So I'm using ASM.js as well. I'm using A-Frame from Mozilla, which makes it really easy to build um, these uh, virtual reality um, applications. Um, <coughs> using 3JS, WebGL, and all of the others. So, I, I think uh, none of you uh, authors of these libraries uh, ever thought it would be used that way, but thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, and finally, I left out uh, all of the details, so if you, if you want to know more, uh, I will probably be giving a slightly more technical introduction in the community area at the LiveJS uh, booth tomorrow. So, um, thank you very much. Oh, uh, and, and, and one thing, um, we're going to do this now, right? Yes. We're going to do this now. Wait, we still have more. Oh, there's more? There's always more? Yes. Can we go back to that one? Uh, there's a couple of announcements. Oh, announcements. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to? Yeah, OK. Uh, the, yeah. No, cement. Yeah, you can, can no. show the t-shirts. Yes. So we have t-shirts again, as you can see, and also hoodies, actually, and stuff. So there's a new Teespring campaign, two, actually, Teespring campaign. So there's this one and then this one. So this one says, People got mad JavaScript. This one says people got JavaScript and has all the speakers that we used on. And so these campaigns, uh, we need at least 20 people who want a t-shirt so that it gets shipped. And it's just w after three days, it just restarts. So if you want a t-shirt, get 20 people together and get a t-shirt or a hoodie or something like that. And so the URLs, how you find it, it's just bit.ly, people got mad JS1 and people got mad JS2, okay? That's the uh, one announcement. The other one is you can stream and download the track for free on SoundCloud. Um, so that's just, what was the URL again? SoundCloud.com slash nested dash loops. People got mad JavaScript. All right? So if you want to listen to it on the go and stuff, cool stuff. Um, is, there, is there more? Oh, yeah. Everything is open source. Uh, you can find all the stuff, like the code, the snippets. I don't know if the snippets are all up yet, but um, all the artwork and everything um, on GitHub. You can play around with it. You can do stuff with it. You can remix it. Whatever. It's all open source. All right. That's it. Shall we do it again? So this is just to show you that it's an actual software that runs on Electron because we didn't change the logo. Uh, there, we also kind of use a hack where there's like an Express app inside this Electron app just to get MIDI support or something. I don't know. It was late and it's six months ago. I didn't want to change it. So let's, let's boot up this thing. This, everything's loaded. Let's go into full screen mode. Also. To the, to the Ableton people, you have to press tab to go to the session view. And yeah, let's go. Yeah. Hello. We all, we all okay? Yes? No? No. Okay. I can just feel the excitement, yeah. We all, we all, okay? Yes, no, no. Okay. I can just feel the excitement, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll return to JavaScript.
What are you? I'll return to JavaScript. What are you? I'll return to JavaScript. What are you? I'll return to JavaScript. What are you? Why do you write modular code? Well, check. People got mad when I put it all in one file. Why do you write modular code? Well, people got mad when I put it all in one file. People got mad. So I'm going to say things which are going to be shocking and hurtful, which are not directed at you at all, okay? JavaScript is a hot mess. All they can do is add more crap on top of it, and they're busy doing that for you. But that's only because it's the worst API ever developed in the history of computer science. This is why the gold standard is offline at first. Now the problem with, now, now the problem with, as everybody knows, right, with JSON is that when you get a huge payload from the server, what is in there? What, 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 what is in there? I don't know. We gained something that starts being called tree shaking. What? Huh? I didn't really get that. Tree shaking. Tree shaking. Because we needed more terms that no one understands. It's, it's, it's just some generic information. You know, this is not scary at all. I higher order functions. You know, this is not scary at all. Functions within functions within functions, etc. You know, this is not scary at all. The flow of data, of inputs and outputs through the program. Kind of like the concept of time. Well, we'll return to the scoreboard. JavaScript, because of that little bit of goodness, has unexpectedly become the world's most popular functional programming language. Functions are king. Fun functions are king. You want to do everything with function. Functional programming is probably the way to go. I will return to... People got... People, people, people got mad. JavaScript. 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 There's totally more, there's always more. Everybody up in our place, if you feel this, put up your hand in our place. Everybody up in our space, if you feel this, put up your hand in our space. Everybody up in our this, love JS, let me see smile in our face. JS can fit na miss, like when action dispatches. What is that? JS can fit na miss, like when action dispatches. More than ever, me the I do this. Dada who and I not hard this. All this cool, never mean a malice. Like the one, wonder than Alice. More love in a this than Alice. More than Rasta man love child. JS can ways go share Hug up people for days Berlin beside the base Nested groups comfy turn up the base Everybody up in all this Love JS when me see smile in a face JS can fit a miss Like when action dispatches This and no C++ No Java no go JavaScript run the show Any browser any size Run on any device the biggest thing I read is still we grow This I no C++, no Java no go JavaScript run the show Any browser, any size, run on any device The biggest thing I read is still we grow Thank you!